Hey, welcome to the next a la carte video for the deep dive. Again, just taking the little parts of the trailer and diving into them a little more deeply with some detail, some commentary, measurements, dimensions, construction uh, notes, I guess, if you will. Uh, today, what I want to focus on is basically this cabinet here. I've already done or will have done or will post this top little section here, which is simply part of the cabinet, but I call this my small tool garage as opposed to where my miter box and table saw are, which is the large tool garage. All of these codes really are coming from, or these labels are coming from Ron Polk's Smart Trailer Plans, which this is based on. The other side uh, over here, which I guess would be the left side when you're facing into the trailer from the back, that is pretty much Ron's plan, modified to fit my trailer size, but that's pretty much Ron's plan there. This side, not so much Ron's plan, other than drawer bank three, which is what this is actually called. That's a little bit closer to Ron's plans. I think the dimensions are very close to what his plans would say. Uh, they should be for his style, style trailer. But it, like he said, and like others have said, you know, you have a good idea. It's always scalable to whatever you have, whether it's a, a five by eight or whether you have a 24 foot trailer that's really, really tall. It's all scalable. So I've scaled this to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna focus on what I would then call drawer bank three excluding this top part, even though it's actually part of the cabinet itself. Okay, so let's get to it. Remember, this is an a la carte deep dive, so I'll actually be opening drawers and taking a look at some of the things that are in those drawers. If you're not interested in a deep dive, then, you know, just skip over it, go find another video, and, uh, you know, maybe something shorter or more appropriate to what you're looking for. All right, well, thank you very much. Let's get to drawer bank three. Okay, here we go with drawer bank three. Now this is an entire cabinet. It actually has two sides to it, which are made out of three quarter or 18 millimeter ply. It has a ceiling and it has, uh, it probably doesn't have a floor, probably has spreaders for a floor and a back. So it doesn't have a solid back or a solid floor. And then of course, uh, what I have done is I have all of these uh, either dadoed or routered slots. And these slots accept either basically a shelf that slides out which is really a drawer without sides or a front or back and of course the drawers themselves so let's talk really quickly about these dadoed slots these dadoed slots i believe are three quarters they go all the way to the length i used a um an upcut spiral half inch bit and i used a template and then I routed all of these and it took like two passes or more and they're half the depth of the three quarter plywood. And then what you see there is just a small piece of hardwood that has been glued and pin nailed and you see that everywhere on all of these slots in case I want to use them. And they are for the passive restraint system for the drawers. So I can show you that down here quickly. Here is just one of my drawers that actually slides out. And if I take a look at this, there's that system. What you'd have to do is lift up, pull forward, and then this is what all of the drawers or shelves look like. And that notch simply slides back and drops down behind. And then if you pull it forward, it can't come out. So none of these actually ever pull out when I'm riding, uh, when I'm driving. So that's the passive restraint system Ron developed for his smart trailer. All of these uh, drawer slots or shelf slots are three and three quarters apart. So if you go from the bottom of one to the bottom of the next, three and three quarters, which allows me then to come down here and I can make two size drawers. So you get the shallow drawer or the, the short drawer and the tall drawer. And literally the tall drawer is just two of these short drawers. And so you can take these short drawers and I can move them down. I can move a tall drawer up. And so it's very, very modular. Uh, so, you know, you can just kind of rearrange things as necessary. I don't, but you could. These drawers, by the way, are three and a half inches tall. They are almost the full width, of course, of the interior of the cabinet, less maybe a sixteenth of an inch for the drawer slide. And then these uh, drawers here are seven inches. Again, full depth, full width, but seven inches tall. So that's the idea. And that method of construction of drawers is mirrored in drawer bank two and all the way down there in drawer bank one, where you have the short ones and the tall ones, three and a half, seven, and you can rearrange these uh, in any increment or 
any arrangement that you want based on that. And so this is consistent. Although I will say that my drawer bank three is wider than my drawer bank one and two. So I cannot move these drawers over to there and vice versa. So that's one modularity that Ron has and others do that I don't. What about this particular drawer bank? What do I have? Of course, you see that everything is labeled. So drywall tools, door jigs, picture hanging kit that I assembled, cabinetry and trim, the infamous hardware store I'm so very, very happy with, secondary hardware store to include Velcro and zip ties, cloth gloves, safety glasses, shims tape, uh, belt sand, uh, not really using that anymore. And then down here, caulk, spackle, you see all the labels here, trash bags, and then down here is kind of more specialty and a little bit of bulk, where I have some specialty tools and some framing nails and such like that. All right, so let's take a deep dive look into shelves and drawers. So here is everything that I have drywall that I carry with me on a daily basis to include sponges, other knives, my uh, bucket scraper, couple of rasps, my lifter, drywall nails, some other sanders, various knives of various sizes. And then I have my larger knives out here, my 8, 10, and 12 inch knife, and a, a relatively new 6 inch that I have that's all stainless steel. Some of the patch kits, all of my paper and uh, mesh tapes. And of course, a couple of pans. I almost exclusively use the silver pan, and the other one is just something I had kicking around for a while. And randomly, just there's nowhere else for it, I have a clamp light. So that's that one. Second open shelf down is where I have basically door and, and window hardware. I have a picture hanging kit that I assembled, and then this is what I have for cabinetry and trim. So I'll take a quick look inside of each one of these. Again, it's a deep dive, so if you're not interested in looking at this stuff, you can take on off, because all I'm going to do is just go each incrementally and open things up and take a quick look. So in my door and window box, this is all I really have. Templates for drilling out knobs and deadbolts various screws, the hole saws and everything that go with all that. Over here, some what I believe would be blind parts, so hanging blinds, just extra stuff there. Old window parts the uh, for the old uh, single sash, counterweighted, double sash, counterweighted, uh, putty scraper, and then pocket door wrench. For picture hanging, I simply assembled a kit because it is amazing what people will pay you for, and people pay me to hang pictures, <laughs> so it, it is amazing. So I assembled a kit with all kinds of things. Now this also includes then various drywall anchors, so it's become kind of a combination kit uh, with some L brackets and such, but there's the picture hanging kit itself, but this is all the miscellaneous things that go with it. I used to have a hammer in here as well, but the hammer no longer fits, but that's a picture hanging kit for me at least. And that has come in handy, and I've made money with it. The next box that I carry is one that I have set up for cabinetry and trim installation. So I have my pony clamps for uh, uh, aligning faces of cabinets and holding them together. I have the uh, miter clamps that are really handy for outside miters. Of course, I have the ever-present and seemingly mandatory jig for drilling uh, for handles and knobs on cabinets that never, ever seem to actually line up with anything that I ever do. So I can't tell you the last time I used them or how frequently I have used them. I do have uh, crown hanging material if I'm working by myself, which I often am. I have profilers, and then I have a variety of different types of cabinetry screws like so, various sizes, all of those extra screws for putting in knobs and pulls. And um, what else do I have? Oh, some trim screws as well in a couple of different colors. And then just a white wax stick for, uh, you know, white cabinets uh, filling holes. So that's a kit that I assembled uh, for that, and it has come in handy. Next drawer down is my hardware store. When uh, I first saw one of Ron's videos and he was able to pull out a drawer and he had his own hardware store there, I was frankly amazed that that happened. You know, he could do that. And so here's my version of that where I have all kinds of hardware. 
basically I you know just to give you a quick rundown always wonder always wanting for washers uh, they just come in so handy many times and I could never find washers without having to go to the store so now I have a bunch and various size nuts all kinds of different types of screws in small quantities all the way through here and I'll just do like I said like I'm doing now overpass here are some just small brad nailers carpet nails uh, brad nails and carpet nails excuse me uh, some furniture parts all the way down through here just various clamps and clips and mirror hangers and, and window parts um, some uh, stoppers feet for various tools and such all the way through so just all of this stuff that really you know had no home and now it's organized and this has saved my bacon a ton of times because I would have just those two screws that you would need here's my secondary hardware store I had a few organizers I was reluctant to throw away and so I kept one for just basically anything that was bolt related then I had the pan head sheet screws and then I had the uh, uh, countersink sheet screws, uh, sheet metal screws as well. A little bit of Velcro, a little bit of extra hardware there that, you know, just really doesn't have a home. And I have, you know, they're too large for jars. Some screen door hardware. And then a bunch of zip ties. And that actually is a paper towel holder that I used to have in the trailer, but just I kind of outgrew it. Okay, so I have a variety of different tapes and some steel wool here, vacuum parts, little, you know, pieces, adapters and such. Uh, that down there is a shim ripper. Uh, I got the idea from Ron Polk. He got the idea from somebody else. I sourced the original material and there you go. Works really well. I was able to cut a lot of these really small shims uh, out of uh, just this piece of oak that I had. And, you know, really, really cool. Really cool how that actually works and creates a nice taper shim. Of course, you can do larger shims, like, you know, the standard shim there that came out of that block. And uh, these are commercially bought shims that I have uh, just wrapped up with Velcro. Other than that, some uh, hearing protection, uh, latex gloves, goggles, regular gloves. Okay, next door down. A lot of different types of caulks and I need to get a better containment system for those caulks because every time the trailer moves or I move the drawer, the caulks all slide forward. Several caulk guns because, you know, every time I seem to show up on a job before the trailer, I was always forgetting the caulk gun and had to go out and buy another one. So there's three of the six that I own. The other three are inside. Plus, of course, the large, uh, the large two, large gun. A little bit of spackle, some scrapers and uh, material that I use for paint. Trash bags, a couple of extra scrubbies, and just some miscellaneous bags uh, that are really handy to have on site. Last drawer in drawer bank 3, DB3, the bottom drawer. I have various types of ropes and strings and lines of all sorts. I have back in there some siding hanging tools that help me out when I'm working by myself to install siding. Um, here I have a variety of specialty tools and a couple of extra chalk boxes like screening tools, gutter tools, metal bending tools. I have a uh, larger bender down there when you're just doing aluminum work. I've recently done some decking and so I have the hidden fastening system by Camo. So I have their gun to install screws on the angle. Below that are just some coil roofing nails that I have in a little bit of bulk. Then here is uh, more of the camo system and some stick nails for my framing nailer and some larger framing nails. Okay, so here you go. That is Drawer Bank 3 Deep Dive uh, with lots of detail. Hopefully not too much, but hopefully it was enough for you. Thank you very much. See you in the next a la carte.